Okay, we're ready to well rock. Done, Harry. Yeah, yeah, we're all good. We're going to start now, uh, show. Okay. Uh, uh, welcome to Toheed and the Spiritual Unity of the Three Principles show. Um, Omar, who is usually the co host, has a family emergency and he sends his love. He was really looking forward to this particular talk and sharing. Uh, by these two beautiful uh, guests, but uh, family emergency called. Um, the, the, sh the show has two guests, but it's a group discussion. I would, uh, I'll be asking questions. That's beautiful. It's always interesting. I have kind of invigorating, challenging questions, but when you participate, it makes it better. So please do if, if, if a question comes up to you. Uh, we don't have too many people here, but we are on Facebook Live, so it will, there'll be uh, other, uh, you know, 100, no, I, I would say two to 300 people watching. And um, uh, so uh, let me introduce from my perspective, uh, this particular topic is called the unity of God, Allah, and mind. Now, even the topic has been interesting, Shoal, because at first we had we had Dr. Uh, Professor Abdullah on, and he objected to that that particular title. He 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 felt that it separated Allah and God, so we went with with the oneness of God, which he thought was fine. But then Omar objected to the oneness of God and said, "No, it has to be uh, the the unity." which uh, of God, mind, and Allah. And so we went with that type of thing. Um, and so the topic is really both of those, both of those in, in a nutshell. Um, I'm, I'm just going to introduce the people with, with a concept. And I, this is an important show for me because uh, show, as you, as you know, I'm a little bit more of a non-practicing Jewish person. Uh, who really has not that big a connection to the Jewish community. But in the, the fact that I'm working so strongly in the Muslim community has brought that feeling out in me that I'm modeling something that the world doesn't understand. And I, I'm hoping this show will show people what actually Rabina said before you came on, that we're already one, we're already connected the Muslim and the Jewish people. And that feeling of oneness uh, to me symbolizes what I, I experienced. So as the training director of, of the addiction department of Back to the Fitra Mentoring Academy and doing this show and a, just a host of other things that are involved, I suddenly feel as a Jewish person that I'm showing that it doesn't make any difference. If the other person is, is a beautiful person, you wanna share with them. It doesn't matter the outside surrounding. Now, Sho, Rabbi Sho was very instrumental in the movement of the three principles. In fact, I would say one of the major contributors to the uh, evolvement of the three principles in Europe. And uh, his experience uh, when he went to uh, have some training with George Pransky, he came back, he, and, and I'm just gonna mention Terry Rubenstein, seemed to release a tremendous amount of, of exposure to the three principles. And when, I, when I've listened to Shaw, on, on a, this is our third show with him, one of the things he said has always stuck, struck, stuck with me, and that is, if there's prejudice, there's no God. If there's separation, there is no God. And I've always felt that is, that is the truth, that when people get into the separations of how they're better, how the others should change, and they think, no God. And when there's God, there's no problem loving everybody type of thing. So I've really uh, admired that statement, Shaul, and uh, and so on and and so and Shaul is also on the board of 3PGC, and so Shaul has been a representative of 
of that type of movement. And it's interesting to me, Sho, as a religious leader, how you could be so strongly connected to the psychological community of the, of the three principles. And maybe you can address that a little bit as, as you talk. Rabina is, is a, a little bit, she has found, found her own connection through the Muslim faith and through the three principles, very much like myself, more of an independent model with a direct connection to God and expressing it in a way, especially in the Muslim women's uh, marriage scenario. And in many ways, Rabina, I look at the Muslim Jewish conflict as a divorce, very similar type of, of feelings where the two, two factions are too emotionally charged to be able to talk to each other, except when they get into a deeper level of consciousness. So uh, I'm gonna start the show, uh, uh, show with the same question I, we had last two weeks ago, we had Yale Abramson talk about beyond the similarities and differences of the two, two faiths. With, and I'm gonna ask the same question of, of Rabina or Ruby, and that is, what does Israel mean to you? You asking uh, you asking me or Rabina? I'm asking you. Well, do, do you mean the the modern state of Israel? I mean whatever comes to your heart. <laughs> well, the word Israel means to me, um, <laughs> and I guess you picked an interesting topic because that's a little bit where um, Islam and Judaism might diverge a little bit. With that, with that particular word that you've chosen there, because Yisrael um, comes from um, the Bible, and it is a, um, it is a, a, it was a name given to Jacob um, after he had wrestled with an angel, and Yisrael means the one who wrestles with God, and um, that to me is the essence of the Jewish faith. It's about um, wrestling with God. It's about trying to find our own truth. Um, and humbly, hum a humble struggle to find one's own inner truth. And if that truth does not, um, does not um, sink or, or fit or work with what you see around you in the structure of the religion, um, you have to kind of figure that out. You got to figure out what you do with that. You, but but you can't um, submit your own truth um, to the religion. That's, that's kind of the Jewish way. And so to me, that's what Israel means. Israel, Yisrael um, means um, the striving for one's own truth and the following it um, no matter what, and no matter how challenging and how difficult and how hard that might be. Um, but being, you have to be true to yourself before you're true to anything else. And how has the three principles in, helped embrace that? Oh, I think it's helped massively because uh, um, um, to me, the three principles has taught me to be much more confident in what I know and what I see. It's, it's pointed me to a deeper uh, truth within myself. Um, and, you know, uh, until I came across the three principles, um, you know, I was, I was a religious man, uh, a rabbi, a religious leader, but so much of it was was theoretical. So much of it was conceptual. Um, there was a, a so much of it was intellectual, and it was the three principles that pointed me towards something deeper, towards something more tangible, to, towards a a truth that was more real, more more genuine, more feelingful, more experiential. And, um, and, 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 and it has, it's incredible to me how, I'll tell you one of the things that um, impressed me when I first went to learn about the three principles, because I was pretty um, skeptical and cynical. And I felt, well, you know, Judaism has all the answers and, and who are these guys? What do they know, really? You know, I've got a three and a half thousand year old tradition behind me and these guys turned up last week. 
it's um you know this guy Sid Banks uh you know hasn't been around for that long so um so I kind of came a little bit uh, I, I tried to be humble you know but I came a little bit I would say overconfident and um and one of the things that impressed me, two things impressed me straight away when I when I met with kind of practitioners who were sort of sharing the principles with me. Um, the first three things, really, the first was just I saw real wisdom. I just saw that these these people have something real here and something solid here and something that that, that makes sense over here. And number two, I saw that it was incredibly consistent with what I'd learned in Judaism. And that was really interesting to me that I could have something that was my own tradition um, sort of built on, on very solid foundations um, and, and, and a long history. And, and these guys um, kind of came up with the same thing, you know, a lot more recently. That was really interesting to me. Um, and then the third thing that really impressed me was the humility. Um, and, and, and Judaism teaches that where there is humility, there is wisdom. Um, you can't, the, the two are two sides of the same coin. It, it, it teaches that, that Torah, which is, which is Jewish wisdom, is like uh, water. And just as water, um, um, you put it kind of on the mountain, it's going to flow down to the bottom. If water flows to the lowest place, so too wisdom flows into the lowest human beings, into those who are most humble. And, and, Humble people don't need to go looking for wisdom. Uh, wisdom finds them. Um, they don't need to find wisdom. The, the, the extent that the, the greatest of all human beings in our mind was Moses. And the Torah says that who's the most humble of all men. And that's not a coincidence. Um, the the, the, the uh, quality that we Jews uh, um, um, value above all, way, way above all, is humility. And I saw a lot of humility in the people uh, teaching the principles. And that, that I felt there's something here. If you, if you find humility, you found something. If you find humility, there's something real. And, and that, so that's kind of how it, it, you know, it, it helped me massively. Okay, well, that's great. Now, now we'll show, I'm gonna ask uh, Rabina the same question. Last two weeks ago, we asked Rubina to talk about her feeling about Mecca, which had a similar feeling to what Yells described about Israel. But this time, I'd like to hear what Rubina thinks, uh, thinks about Israel and how the three principles have sort of helped her in her understanding. Um, I think rather than speak about Israel, I think. Um, I want to really start with um, how the oneness of Allah, where, where it begins, where it begins for me, um, from the Islamic kind of perspective. Um, so in Islam, um, the first pillar is testifying God. So he's saying, I testify that there is no God, but God. And um, I testify that Muhammad is a messenger of the prophet of God. Now the first part of that pillar, which pillar, which is, I testify that there is no God, but God. To me, that has already been asked that question long before any human being was born. So this goes way beyond time, matter, space. It goes way beyond us coming onto the earth where all souls were asked, am I not your lord this is a test this is a testify and this 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 question was put to every soul and every soul re responded by saying yes you are our lord 
So this, this testify of oneness has already begun long before we have come on the earth. And so this also means that when we say there's no beginning and end of God or Allah, that's the, that's the evidence. There is no beginning or end. And the principles talks about there's no beginning and end. Um, the, it's a first doorway to the divine, the first doorway to the ocean of peace and ocean of love. It's, it's, to me, it's about surrender because surrender to what is. It's a freedom, uh, it's a will, it's a free will to see that there is only truth and nothing but the truth. And that is saying, well, there is no God but God. And it also means that I see truth and there is only truth, there is nothing else. It doesn't matter whether, the, whether there are Jews or whether there are Muslims, whether they are whichever faith they are from, it's all the same. There is no truth but truth. Going back right to the beginning, it starts from there. So to me, it's, it's kind of like bearing witness, it's bearing witness and the oneness which then in the three principles starts right now in this present moment where there is only truth. There's no past, let's say, no, there's no time here. If we're saying um, there's no future, but right now in this moment, there is only truth, but truth. There is only Allah. That's it. And we are all one. We are all connected. We are all connected to this oneness. There is no human being on this earth that is not connected already. We are already connected, whether we are Jews or Muslims or Christians, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. The, the connection is already there. It's already there. It's it's only when we think we're not connected, that's the only time when we feel separated. It's the only time when we will just pour hatred and, and wars and every single thing that has been coming out from the beginning of time, because wars have not just started now, they've been there from the beginning. And this is the only reason that when we see separation, when we think that we are separate, then that's where the illusion that we believe and then fall into that trap of the illusion and where, where the wars happen, where the hatred is, where the, where the frustration is. We want power, we want money, we want to control, we want everything. So it's really not about the labels that we hold. It really isn't. It, it's how we see the world. It's how we see around us through the level of consciousness that we are speaking from, the, the level of certainty that we are speaking from. And that is what we are here to share. And that's what I'm doing today. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Joel, could you see a similarity between humility and surrender? Yeah, absolutely. No, no, no. As as Rabina was saying that, I very much um, um, resonate with the idea of um, surrender to truth. I think that's what it's about. I think it is about surrender to truth. And, and I think that when you surrender to truth, that is humility. And when you find that within yourself, um, you you have no um there's no boundaries there's no the human beings are just beautiful creatures uh, um 
created in the image of God, souls like 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 all of us. And and on that level, when you can see beyond the superficial to what really people are, um, um, there's no conflict and there's no difference between us. So yes, a hundred percent, I I very much see that. You know, I, there was I, I was just um, I've been listening to a, a couple of um, podcasts recently um, about about the Middle Ages, and I was um, listening to one about um, Al Andalus. If you know about Al Andalus, was was sort of Muslim Spain in the Middle Ages, the Kingdom of Al Andalus. And, and originally it was run by the Umayyad, Umayyad, excuse my pronunciation if I don't pronounce it right, Caliphate. Um, and there was incredible tolerance there between Christians, Muslims, and Jews. You know, that, that Caliphate lasted a long time in Al Andalus. And it was a golden age. It was really a time when, when um, there was a, a, a unity and a feeling of unity. Um, Unfortunately, the, the you know the the um, the Almohads came and that that changed things a great deal. Um, you know, looking to control, as as you were saying, Rabina, when when human beings seek to control and seek to control others and seek to look for uniformity and conformity and and want to kind of put everyone in the same box and make sure they all stay there. Um, that's when you're going to have trouble. That's when you're going to have problems. And that that doesn't come from humility. That, that, that comes from ego. That doesn't come from humility, and it doesn't come from religion either. It comes from human ego. Um, maybe um, with the excuse of religion, or maybe through the medium of religion, but it's not the religion. Not the religion. Religions don't preach that. Religions don't preach intolerance. Religions don't pre preach um, um, forcing conformity. Um, certainly Judaism doesn't, and my sense is that Islam doesn't either, and, and Christianity as well. But unfortunately, you know, human beings are human beings and, and they'll do what they do <laughs> and uh, they'll, they'll give religions a bad name in doing so. But I think at, at its core, at their core, religions talk about unity and religions talk about commonality and religions talk about, um, um, you know, that, that we, are, we are souls created in God's image and we are all the same on that level. And if we could just kind of look beyond that. I think um, I think the, the world would be a much better place. I I woke up this morning with this thought: God's truth and my truth are one and the same. When that is there, no problem. Yeah. But when I when God's truth and my truth are separate, as, as you were talking about, show not so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what Sid's understanding as well. And he, that's why he kept pointing to people that this truth was inside of us. Um, one of the, one of the uh, interesting times in the Muslim world I have show is they have a, an interesting uh, perception of that God is separate and yet there is a connection to God. So my next question revolves on, in, in, to me, in the Judaic uh, concept of God, I've always liked the phrase great nothingness or keter, the great nothingness. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in uh, the Muslim faith, I've heard like the great intelligence type of thing. And in, in the uh, 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 indigenous faith, it's the great spirit or uh, the great mystery type of thing. So just briefly, could you d describe how you see this very easy question? What, <laughs> what is God? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want me to do it standing on one foot, Harry, as well I'm at it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, visually interesting. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, I, um, you know, Maimonides, who was on possibly the greatest Jewish scholar in history, certainly up there from our perspective. What's his uh, name? I'm sorry. I, I didn't My, Maimonides, Maimonides. Okay. Uh, 
uh, he lived in, he actually lived in Al-Andalus, so he came from Al-Andalus, and, and he was, um, he was the, um, the doctor to the Sultan of Egypt. So he was a doctor, he was a great doctor, and he was also a great rabbi and scholar and philosopher. And um, he had the idea that you can't describe God by what he is, you can only describe him by what he's not. Because for us living in a, in a finite world, we don't have the, the minute you think about God, you are limiting him, let alone speak about him, let alone try and say any words about God. That, that, that's really limiting him. That's really putting him in a box. Um, the minute, so, so just the thought of what God is, is not what God is. The, the, the only, and, and, and in a certain way, Sid used to talk about this as well, when he used to say it's all about the feeling. You can, the only way you can experience God is, is through experience. It is not through ideas. It's not through concepts. It's not through theories. It's not through words. Now, we do have to use words because otherwise there's no conversation to be had and we can't share them, we can't teach and we can't kind of put out there what we see and what we know. But I think that the minute you, you we have to know what we're doing. We have to know that whatever we're going to say about God or whatever we're going to think about God is, is a limitation of God. And in a certain way, the less we do it, the better. Um, the more we just experience it and feel it and connect to it, the better, the more, the more formless it is, the better. But if you look, we, we, for example, we say God is formless. Well, that's a negative. That's he's not form. He's infinite. He's not finite. We don't have the word to describe what he is. We just know what he's not. We know even to say the word he is, is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous uh, word to use for God. God's not a he or a she or in it, or any of those things. That's, that's us anthropomorphizing God. That's us finding words to, to describe God, to explain God to our very, very, very limited mind, to our very, very limited ability to really um, 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 understand. Uh, I think what's most meaningful is to get touched by God, is to, is to have a feeling for God. That's when we, that's when we experience oneness. It, it's, the minute God's here and I'm here, there's this disconnect. There's, I'm putting God somewhere else that I'm not. Um, one of the great mysteries, and this is the greatest mystery in my mind of all, and I, I can't, the more I think about this, I try not to think about it because it's too mind-blowing. And it it's really touches on Jewish mysticism and, and to some extent the essence of Jewish mysticism is, is how can, if, this, if God is infinite, if God is genuinely one and everything, which is what we understand it to be, one doesn't mean not two, obviously. One means one in a deeper sense, one with a capital O, one as in all of, all of creation is, is, is God. One of the words we have for God in Judaism, and again, we use words for God, but we realize they are limited in, the, in, the, in what they are. One of the words we have for God is hamakom, which is the place. God is the place. He is the place in which the universe exists. Um, um, not that he has his place and the universe has its place. He is the only place and the universe exists in that place that is God. But the, the mind-blowing question for me is, if God is everything, then where's, where's room for me? You know, <laughs> where's room for any of us? You know, God is God is infinite. He is He's the whole thing. And 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 to to imagine that there's, you know, there's a me that seems to have some sort of independence, is just, you know, the less you think about that, the better in my mind, because I just think it's too it's beyond our beyond our pay grade. I, I kind of throw it out there sometimes, and I kind of <laughs> wonder about it. But I know that I'm never going to get to the bottom of that. In, in this world, at least, you know, in this lifetime, in a lifetime of form, I know I'm never going to be able to kind of see that or understand that or know that. But, I, but I'm certain that once we transcend form, um, then, um, then obviously our knowledge and our wisdom will expand infinitely.
and and so much more will make sense. It's it's the age old problem. How do I fit into that puzzle? Yeah, yeah, but it's all the pieces are there already. So so, and I've got and I got a new piece. The way I one of the ways I've been seeing it a little bit, Shaul, is uh, God is God. We experience God, but we also participate with God. And, yeah. And a participation is a very important aspect of the three principles. Mm -hmm. As because we are creating by far, we, we basically we get our personal opinions out of the way. And 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 then we what we do is we we receive God's message, guidance, dreams, visions for us. Of course, it's not us that heals. That is obvious. But we we participate. And Sid was very big on us on, on the identity, our true identity of who we are as God and as a human being. Obviously, the psychology deals with the human condition. So for me, it's too, Harry, I agree with you, but ultimately it makes no sense. You can't make sense of it. You've just no, got no, to, no, that, to know the truth of it. That Unfortunately, I have to agree with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's part of the humility you know it's great to have that humility to say i know the limits of my own ability to understand yeah yeah beautiful so rabina the same little easy question <laughs> yeah beautiful question it's a great question um I see, I see, um, I mean, I agree with Charles, you just can't describe. You just, there is no end to description. However we try to describe it, it's really beyond our conception, um, uh, beyond time, space and matter. But even if we go down there, it's an impossible um, task in itself. However, um, how I, my journey here was to find God, was to find Allah and to connect with him. This was my journey, it was like I was so hungry to be connected. I so was desperate. I really, really thought I had to read many, many prayers, get up in the middle of the night in order to connect with him, which is all good, which is all good. But sometimes I was kind of just made up, well, I feel I don't feel connected. I don't feel connected. So I was kind of on this journey, this, this path, looking and searching, how do I get close how do i get close even though it says in the quran allah is already there closer to you than your juggler babe we know that he tells us that that i'm closer to you than your juggler babe i mean how close is your juggler babe it's, it's right here and but sometimes we don't see it we don't see it so the moment, the moment I woke up and saw that I am already connected, my search has ended right there. I don't need to search anymore. Right there. God is here right now in this present moment. Allah is here right now in this present moment. And tears of gratitude when that happened i cried for a very long time good few days i think weeks because it had, it was a long search my journey had been long and painful but the moment i realized my search has ended 
that gratitude poured out of me. The connection, I was looking, I was seeing, not into my soul, but out from my soul. It was like a window. I could see the humanity all connected. And God, Allah, there are 99 names that we have been given for Allah, you know? And each name, I would say, points to love. Points to love and kindness. God is kind and love. And so many times God is presented in so many fearful ways from, you know, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. And, and then that, you know, and, and the love and kindness and the truth and, and the mercy is not kind of brought to us. So a lot of the time, um, it's the opposite that we're told. But really, if we look at how much mercy there is, how much love, and, and when my poor is hot, you know, when my heart is pouring out with, with love, kindness, gratitude is the biggest one. It, at the simple thing, like this finger, thank you so much for the perfection that there is. And that's where I see that God is Allah. Wow, my tears are pouring. And so um, it, I don't have to sit on the prayer mat to, to, to have that. That can happen any time, any place. The moment I'm seeing love, the moment I'm seeing. So it, there are no words that can fill the description of what is God or Allah. There just isn't. There are hundreds more, millions more that would not even cover this world to what God is. Um, and so, yeah, beautiful question. But I, I felt the experience of it, which, which you know, um, coming across the three principles, it blew my world because my search ended and the contentment, the peace and the love that I experienced was coming from my love. And, and the connection, knowing that I'm already connected, that was huge. That was huge. Because people still talk about getting connected. And well, I say, well, we're already connected. You don't need to connect to anything because we're already connected. The only thing that's stopping us seeing that is our thinking. That's it. Rabina, I'd love to ask you a follow-up question to that, if I may. Yeah. And um, I'm usually at the receiving end of this question, so I'm interested to hear kinda, what, what you do with it. Because what I'm hearing is, um, I, it sounds to me, I was going to ask you this question earlier, but it sounds to me like you were brought up in the Muslim tradition and, and in the Muslim religion. Um, and you didn't seem to find God there. Um, and, and it was only when you came across the three principles that, that you did. Um, and so my question is, what do you see the role? If, if you found God through the three principles, what do you need the religion for? And I'm just rephrased. It's, it's not that I didn't see God prior to the three principles. Um, it's just that I was searching to get closer to him. So he was, God was already there. But then, the, but the religion yeah, didn't bring you closer to him. More deeper connection, more deeper connection. So I, I feel that I, it, it, it wasn't enough what I had already, if that makes sense. 
Um, so my my existence of God was already there, but I I felt that um, the the anger, the emotions, the you know, it's like I, I was kind of like disheartened. Well, I'm doing everything. I'm doing everything. You know, I'm reading the Quran. I'm doing the prayers. I'm doing what is expected of me as a Muslim. But why is it that my marriage is in pieces? Why is it that I'm in rage all the time? Why is it that? And I wanted the answers. I wanted those answers because it wasn't enough just to to do prayers and, and do the Quran. I'm thinking, how is that possible? How is that possible for me to um, to accept that? Because um, I should be feeling peaceful and I should not be in rage and all that kind of thing. And, and um, so this, this was so, so important for me because I had gone beyond to what everybody else is looking for, but I wanted to know what the next level was. And it wasn't shown to me straight away. I, what I prayed for and asked for came two or three years later where I came across three principles. And then it kind of just made sense. And it's like, wow, wow. It, it's, I've actually found who I'm looking for, which was me. And also God at the same time. I'm sorry, what was the last part of your question, Joe? No, no, that was that was it. That was the whole question. Um, and I just wanted to kind of follow up with that, if I, if I may, just with my own thoughts on it, because I, I see that so much um, in the Jewish religion as well, of people um, genuinely seeking, you know, from their hearts to find God and to connect to God and to have that feeling of God. And they are so committed to the religion in trying to do that. You know, they go, they do everything they need to do and they, they do it with energy and with vigor and with commitment and with seriousness. And, and so often they just don't find that closeness through it. And my, my kind of understanding, which is similar to yours, although I don't want to cut and paste it on you because you might see it a little bit differently, but, but is that, is that, the religion supports you in a relationship with God. Uh, the, I'm talking Judaism here. Um, it doesn't necessarily create the relationship with God. The, the relationship with God you have to find from within. That has to be a very personal thing. That's something you have to discover for yourself. Now, once you have it, a, a religion can create a beautiful structure for, for developing that and for sustaining that and for allowing that to flourish. But if you take the personal feeling out, if you haven't found that yet, if a person hasn't found that yet, if a person doesn't have that, that personal sense of connection to God, um, in my mind, it's quite possible they could go through a religion for the rest of their lives and never find it, uh, as hard as they try. I think it's got to be a very personal discovery. And, and I think, like, like you say, um, it's got to come from a, a quest. It's got to come from a seeking. There's, there's got to be a searching for it. You've got to be, you've got to want that. You've got to look for that. The rabbis say that um, God leads human beings in the way that they want to go. And so we have to kind of go looking and seeking. And then, as, as you said, it came three years later, not even in the form that you were expecting it to come uh, from somewhere totally left field. But but God sent it you, you know, and, and, and I think that that search, that quest for truth, that quest for what's real, that quest for that feeling of connection and relationship. Um, I think if a person has that, um, it might take time and they'll have to be patient and they'll have to be, um, um, you know, might have to be, it'll be challenging and they might have to kind of overcome a lot. But but I think if they have that, they'll find in the end. There's no, there's no. Um, there's no looking and not finding in this because God is there. It is a truth. It's real. It's genuine. So something that's real, you can't look for and not find it. And 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 so I think that that I, I re really resonates with me what you're saying. And I think we have the same challenge in a certain way in the Jewish religion is is that of people going through the motions of the religion, 
genuinely and sincerely and with a with a wonderful feeling but and, and seeking God in doing so, but and sadly not necessarily finding God as they do. Yeah, um, absolutely agree with you. Um, it, it becomes like um, a sense of hopelessness and, and a bit of despair. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they're trying so hard, they're doing mm. what they can. Yeah. Um, I know. They're still kind of like seeing their life in pieces and, and mm. kind of really, you know, depression and, and, and suicide and divorces. And there is so much going on. There is so mm. much. Um, but it's like I mentioned right at the beginning, the first pillar, the first pillar was the pillar that was um, uh, the message that all prophets shared from, from the beginning of time, from Adam up to Prophet Peace Duponin. And this is the same message that the first pillar, there is only one God. That's it. And because this this first pillar is so powerful and huge, it's kind of missed, to be honest. It's just kind of words only. But the three principles absolutely helps to see the clarity of that. It's helped me to see the clarity of that first pillar. Because it's the first pillar that's the foundation to everything. So it's like, you know, because you've got the other pillars, you know, the, the prayer and going to America and, you know, all that kind of thing. But once you understand the first pillar on a, on a deep consciousness level, the other pillars follow beautifully because sometimes I can stand in prayer so present and sometimes maybe not, but it, the, the the awareness the when I open the book of the, you know the Quran sometimes I am so clear I see each word beyond the word beyond the word that I read so I kind of it's it's sort of amazing a, a connection there and sometimes not okay I'm not saying I don't see it all the time but to, to see it is like, even for a second, is like um, a gift. It's like a treasure that one receives. So we're talking about insight here, we talk about awareness, we're talking about the consciousness is, is awakened in that moment, seeing is a witness, the witness to, to what's happening, to, to seeing what's beyond the word. Uh, and it's up, there is no words to describe it. There are no words. So the importance of on, sorry, sorry. importance, it's the importance of knowing the knowing, one of the names for Allah is the knowing, is is a unity, like we're talking about the oneness. That oneness is that first pillar. That oneness. So, something you said earlier, um, I think you said it's from the Sunnah, not from the Quran, but I might be wrong. Um, well, sorry. In, in, in the first pillar. I don't know if it's part of the first <laughs> pillar or a, a consequence of the first pillar, but you said, first pillar is I heard something. you say, which I love, that um, not only is God one, but every human being knows that. That that it's it's like it's implanted. The knowledge of that is implanted in every human being. You know, you were saying that that Allah came to souls before the before the creation of the universe, even, and and asked them, and they said, "Yeah, yeah, we we know, you know, we we got that. That's kind of obvious." And I think that's such an important thing that that. Every single human being, it doesn't matter how, how lost they are, how disconnected they are, how, how desperate they are, how confused they are, has that knowledge of truth inside of them, has that knowledge of truth of, of the oneness of God, not just a little bit of truth, not just a sense of truth, not just an idea of truth. We have the ultimate truth 
inside of us. We have the absolute truth inside of us. And I think that's, that's something so powerful in the principles as well. I think that's so helpful. When you have somebody like, um, uh, you know, the Bill Pettit, you know, who's a, who's a psychiatrist, and it's just different language, but it's the same thing. When he kind of sees somebody who's really um, in a desperate way uh, mentally with all sorts of diagnoses, and he says to him, I know that you're perfect. I know that you are, you, you're healthy. You know, it's, 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 it's saying, I know that you know truth. I know that you know what's real. I know that you know the oneness of God already. It's just a, a different way of saying the same thing because that's, what's, that's what heals people. You know, I, I do believe that, that the challenges we have faced and, and continue to face with mental illness and, and all that goes along with that and the suffering that is in our world today is because people have lost the sense of God. If we, when you have that sense of connection to God in your life, your life is great. Your life is perfect. Your life is, as you were saying, your life is a life of gratitude. Your life is a life of just, it, it, it's beautiful. No matter what it looks like, it is beautiful because, because that's the truth. You, you, you're touching something deeper. And, and I think that we live in societies, unfortunately, that have lost the feeling for that and have lost the sense of that. And, and in doing so, that's, that's going to lead to significant human suffering. But the great thing is, um, there's a simple solution to it all, is just reintroduce people to the truth of that unity of God. And, and, and when people see that, it washes everything away. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, this is evidence when I speak to my clients and I ask them, this is the first question I asked, do you know where your feelings come from? And they always point within. And mm. they know where the truth is they, they know they already know like this is why I, i'm saying that every soul already knows what the truth is yeah and so every time i ask that question well it's it's never out there they point mm -hmm. it but then a lot of the time their illusion of thought which is non-existent is is telling them that something else is responsible somebody else is responsible for their for their suffering and yeah. the moment they realize the more it, it kind of like it's like a it's like we are the messengers of, of truth and we kind of like just tapping on somebody's shoulder well you know you know the, um, that you kind of like know the truth but you're really looking that way instead and it blows their mind blows their mind wow yeah and they know it already <laughs> um this moment they see it it's like Wow, thank you. And it's just just somebody just coming along and just like, you know what? You you're looking the other way. It's that way. Mm -hmm. What we're here to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I meant when I said, you know, when I first came across the principles, I, I felt it really resonated with Judaism. Because all it's doing is introducing people to a deeper truth. That, that's really all it is. And it's funny to me that I find sometimes religious people, and I'm sure this is true in, in, in your religion as well, a little bit suspicious of it or feel like this is something, you know, that's not, not, not uh, kosher, you know, it's, not, it's, not, it's against the religion or it's anti the religion or, or it's, it's heretical. Um, and that's just people that don't know what he's talking about. Because when you listen and when you hear what's being said, it, it, you can't argue with it. It's just pointing to truth. That's all it is. A very, very simple truth. A very, very simple truth of God. And not the theory of God, not the concept of God, not the philosophy of God, but the, but the experience of God. And, and, and I find that that's, and again, in my religion, I feel that's what's lacking. I feel what's lacking in my religion is the experience of God. We can, we can talk till, till the cows come home about God and what he's like and what he is and how he works and, and, and philosophize and theorize, but you don't meet a lot of people that have a deep sense of walking with God on a day-to-day -day basis in their lives. And that, to me, is what matters. That, to me, is what's really important. 
Can I just share what you've just said about um, some people uh, kind of like going to go against, well, what is this, you know, some kind of cult or something like that, whatever. I'm one of those people. (laughs) (laughs) I am one of those people who was so like, to me, the Quran is still the only book on the face of the earth that, that is close to my heart. Okay. And this is what I this is what I was coming with. And when I was hearing, when I came across the three principles, I was like, what is this? Is this like to do with Islam? Is it is it to do with I, I'm not sure, right? Okay, so I'm I had this attitude of no 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 no. I'm not gonna part with my Quran with the three principles. That's just something I don't know. I'm not sure about that. And so I, I was honestly that 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 um, person who was fighting against it, and I was mm. like, but then I there was a moment where I came and I thought, you know what, I'm going to have to just temporarily put the crown down, and and my coach actually, he was my own at the time, he. He says, do you know, do you know this is Tawheed? Tawheed. And I was like, whoa. So I put the crown down. No one told me to. I just did it myself. I'm like, do you know what? I need to listen to what this is because I kind of knew what the truth was. That's how I, you know, came on to three principles. It was like kind of pulling me towards that way. But I was hesitant. I was not fully accepting it. I was like fighting with it. And then that awakened moment came. You see, it, it can't come with, um, oh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to um, do the three principles and the religion at the same time and, you know, try and connect them and all that kind of it. That didn't work. That's not how I sort of came across it. It was like, I had to. And then, yeah, let me have a look at what, what this is. And then it's only through insight, only through an awakened heart. It's only through my consciousness all of a sudden, like opening up. And, and I was like, oh, my God, because I was the only person. I was the only Muslim at the time. And I'm like, wow, just... I felt so different. I thought, oh my God, are people going to like see me weird or crazy or all that? And I was just so scared to even talk about it, you know? And um, and then all the time, it, you know, <laughs> I just, I look back now and I think, wow, wow. It, it's just, I understand where people are when they are, just sort of scared to look at this is mm-hmm. this is not part of my religion but I I could you can they can only experience it through insight it's it's because I know many people kind of like try and compare it to religion constantly but that's not the way that's not the path um it it's really is the the awakened heart is the is the um, center of every religion. It, it's it's awakened heart that's the center of the faith, not the other way around. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it really does. I, I'd love to say more. You know, Harry, I've got to go because just otherwise I'm going to become one of uh, Rabina's clients give, for her marriage counseling. If I'm not careful. Okay. Well, just uh, let me say one minute and then I'll let you go. Okay. 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 Just just one minute because I've really got to go. Yeah. uh, By the way, thanks. How beautiful to watch the feelings between the two, the two people grow and grow. This is a, this is a story about your wife, uh, Shaw. Uh, I asked Shauna uh, Rosenblatt, how she saw the three principles and being Jewish, because it was a question, not so much about being Jewish, but what is on my mind. And she answered, everything comes from the three principles and how I choose to practice it is as a, as a religious Jewish person. 
And for some reason, Shaul, that changed my life. Well, well I'll tell her. <laughs> honest, honest. It changed well, my, because I was confused about that. And she, well, she clarified that for me. And I feel that the two of you have clarified some of those questions for the people who are lucky enough to listen to this inspiring conversation between the two beautiful, beautiful guests. Thank you, Shaw. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. And I'm sorry to rush off. If if I wasn't away with the family, I would have loved to have spent longer. I'm really enjoying the conversation. That, do you know what, Shaw? It shows. Yeah. You, 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 yeah. You, yeah, it showed. No, definitely. Very much so. Well, thank you. And thank you, Abina, as well. Um, I really appreciate it. And I will say, say good night and bow out. Thank you, Sean. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. A real be. pleasure. A real pleasure. And um, lots of love to everybody who's listening. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, wasn't that fun, Ruby? Beautiful. Yeah. It's, uh, it's heart-rendering to see how the two of you were sharing intimately. As soon as that happens, all the differences disappear. And what you are saying, like a lot of the Muslim people that I'm involved with, there's when I talk, they say, oh, that's just, you're, you sound like a Muslim. And I go, well, uh, I'm not doing, it's just because truth is, is what you're, we're talking about the truth that is expressed through the Quran, expressed through Muhammad, but the experience, which has been highlighted here, by the way, the experience of being connected to God. And I, I want to just uh, mention something that came to me when you were talking about gratitude. In, in, the, in the three principal movement, we know that Salt Spring was the initiation of the first souls that listened and heard. And it was not psychological, it was spiritual. It was all a spiritual journey, uh, or uh, that's what I heard. The time we stopped growing, the time when Harry Derbitsky stopped growing was when Harry Derbitsky lost his gratitude for what he had heard and what he was hearing. That's when I stopped growing. And what you have emphasized very strongly in your experience, as long as you have gratitude, you will never stop growing. I promise you that. Because only when I reclaimed that gratitude, Rabina, did I actually start to grow again. And that was 45 years later. I was growing, you know, bit, but you know, if you know what I mean. But it took until I realized my connection to what's said with his message and the truth that you're talking about. Yeah, because it, it's, it's a natural flow, Harry, isn't it? That's right. It's, it's very, a gratitude. The gratitude is the natural flow. It's not force. I have to be grateful. I have to be, you know, and try and do this kind of false behavior. It's a natural flow from the heart. When when we are grateful, it, it's there is no um, kind of sitting down and trying to remember to be grateful kind of thing. Um, that's really nonsensical, really, because it it's true gratitude when you are awakened in that moment. Um, it's so different from trying to be grateful, trying to be you know like experiencing gratitude uh, it's just a completely different feeling um i mean i can i can take a walk in the park um and be so in the moment and be grateful or i could just take a walk in the park <laughs> it, it, it's it, it's the same scenery it's the same trees, it's the same birds, it's everything around me is the same, it's not changed, but it's how I see them in that moment. And, right. and that gratitude is, there's no words for it. 
you know. No, it's it's the lubricant that brings a balance between being being God and being an ordinary human being. That connection is it's Sid said even a glimpse is powerful. And the glimpses that we have is so powerful that it brings tears to our eyes. And I like can't... pearls. I like pearls. I see them as pearls because they are pearls from within. And um, yeah, you can't really describe them. You just got to experience them. No, but you can feel them because yeah. they're real in the moment. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to be honest, from, Ruby, uh, and to be honest, Ruby, beyond our wildest dreams. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is why, this is why I had so many tears. Um, you know, as as I was experiencing um, who I really was and where my feelings were kind of really coming from. Um, it's the lifetime guilt that you carry. Uh, it's a lifetime blame that you carry. It, you know, all of a sudden, it was non-existent in a second. And you think, wow, where did that go? I don't think about it anymore. And this is what we're talking about. The, the, the insightful... Um, uh, experience of of just something that didn't really exist, but it's like no longer there. Um, didn't exist in the first place, but I thought it did. Um, and no longer there. Wow. You can't buy that. There's no price to it. There is no, doesn't matter what in the world price you have, you cannot buy that. You just cannot buy peace. You just can't. Um, and my two favorite words are peace and love. Those are my favorite words and gratitude is a third. Yeah. And my truth is if you want to keep growing, which obviously is a prerequisite to keep growing, you have to have gratitude. The gratitude keeps your mind, personal mind, out of the story. And then it goes beyond your wildest dreams. And the only thing that you have to keep saying, and as, as Ruby says, not with words, with feelings that are coming from within you, is gratitude. And it keeps everything balanced. Because only our thinking can take us out of the balance. But gratitude, I'm telling you people, 45 years I stopped growing because of lack of gratitude. I grew. But not like when I had, when the gratitude, and perhaps because Ruby, I was so stubborn, when it finally, the tipping point came, I had so much gratitude for it, that I understood it, not to interfere with it, where before I had a, a personal agenda. Yeah. Got to give up our personal agenda for god's agenda and then the sharing is beautiful well ruby this has been really a pleasure to share the feelings with you and um, your wonderful soul and spirit and i know rabbi show really enjoyed talking to you uh, you could see that could you see that yes yes definitely very rewarding you could see his spirit lift his interests grow his fascination expand that's the beauty of two becoming one yeah yeah that was I really already one but expanding that's right already one but it's still two separate until the mind joins yeah and then absolutely and it was very interesting to watch he actually got excited he actually was enthralled. Oh, this is, I can talk about these questions that are on my mind and so on. So that was really a special, glorious feeling within it. And of course, the truth that every human being 
should ha should experience and so on yeah thank you so much harry for... and yeah yeah thank you that that that's very beautiful xander uh, maybe before we xander just as a finale just tell us what you felt from the experience of listening to rabina and and shul talk rabbi shul talk to each other just just a quick one though xander okay i can't turn my camera on no problem it, it, you look better this way i, I <laughs> you should try it harry <laughs> how, um, how can you how can you spoil perfection <laughs> yeah. anyway just gives me okay yeah. yeah there's whole there's holes in my smile right <laughs> um yeah i i found the uh the discussion was um i always i always get something from from these discussions always um i'm not a religious person um but uh, i i i i i always enjoy i've listened to quite a few um i don't know what the term is this, uh, okay i've listened to a few uh conversations discussions where there have been uh, people faiths represented by various faiths represented by by different people um, and I've listened to quite a few of them, and I always find them interesting. Um, if I was to, well, you know, if, if I was to mention one takeaway from from this discussion, um, it's just the reminder, well, two reminders, actually, that <laughs> actually, do you know something? Rather than doing that, uh, just very quickly, if I could just tell you that in 2012, I had what I have called, met Carrie, you, you know this, I've mentioned it before, I had what I call, uh, uh, sometimes I forget the words, <laughs> um, it was an experience, and everything that was mentioned tonight, uh, you know, it, it just fell away from me, all the trouble, the, the mind stuff, it just, it just, it just dropped out, dropped off me, and the first thing I wrote, the first blog post I wrote after that experience was to say that even the word God is to call that which we call God, to call it anything, is, is misinformed because as soon as I name, as soon as I give that a name, then I have to define what I'm speaking about. And so there is no name that there's no word that 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 can you know there is no single word for that, and I don't mean that as an as a net. I just mean uh, you know I uh, I just I just a little a little shorter. That... <laughs> ah, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there, there are no words, right? So yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I do go on at length sometimes. So that's that. So what did you what did you hear with relationship to that experience with what the, the two were talking about? Well, you know, to my mind, um, I, I I was I was religious at one time. I was I was involved in, uh, in a religion for for a few years, but in 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 recent times, what I've come to see is that. Um, I, 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 I don't condemn religion. I just know that to know that which we call God, I don't need religion. Um, that's my own view. I don't need religion. I know that there is God, that there is the absolute or whatever term you want to use. I know it's there. Um, I, 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 you know, um, religions, re religion is a, um, I, I see it as a stepping stone. Um, to th there's always something more to be seen. That's that's it. Well, it what what I have experienced with what you have because I also am not a religious person, is being involved in the Muslim world. I've been deeply touched by the power 
of what the people have gained in the, in from their religion and how they've taught me, especially about unattachment, detached from reality, but the beautiful sweetness and, and so on. So in the combination of the three principles in religion, I have found something, uh, Rabina, that actually has removed a obstacle in my head regards to what Xander was talking about, the religious aspect of life. And I found, to be honest, it's a treat to be involved with people who are more religious than I am, but living the truth. And that seems to be the bottom line. If you're living the truth, you're free to express it in the ways and get truth. And the truth in the Muslim faith has broadened the under, my understanding of the truth from the three principles. It's as simple as that. I think I think there's truth to be found in all religions, Harry. Yeah, there is, if we can see it. If we can see it, <laughs> yeah. And with that note, maybe, ladies and gentlemen, we will we will we will uh, call it. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.